every time the camera kept changing, I was like, oh my God, it's someone else, oh my God. I had to watch this film twice just to take it all in. Where the heck has that come from? Hello darlings, how are you? Welcome to Fabaret. For those of you who are new here, my lovelies, hi, I'm Richard. I love all things to do with theatre, music, dance, all that kind of stuff. If that's what you love as well, why not press that subscribe button and join the Fabaret family? Yay! <laughs> Basically what happened, right, I did a video, I filmed all of it, doing a review of the Tick Tick Boom film on Netflix. And as soon as I finished filming that, the very fortunate event happened where Stephen Sondheim passed away. And as soon as that happened, I knew I had to get a video tribute out for him because that was the most important thing. So I watched Tick Tick Boom, which does have an actor playing the role of Stephen Sondheim in the film. And I watched it before he passed away. And then I was like, do you know what? I need to watch this film a second time to really get all of it. And I watched it again and it was such a surreal experience. Like knowing that you've watched something literally just a week ago that had someone in it who has now passed away and then go back to watch it again. It was like a completely different world for me. I had to watch this film twice just to take it all in. So this video is take two of that video. And you might also notice we've got Christmas decorations in the background now. Oh yeah, spare no expense here. Oh my God, it's December. I've got to get the tinsel and all the glamour up. So to start off, I have to admit, I was quite nervous going in to watch this film. There's been loads of film adaptations of musicals over the last couple of years, and some of them have really hit well. And some of them have not been doing so well. And for me, I, love Rent. I love Jonathan Larson. I think he's incredible. Now I've actually seen a stage production of Tick Tick Boom. It was in 2017 at the Park Theatre in London. And the stage version normally only has three cast members in it. Now of course the film version was always going to be different to the stage version. Directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda and starring Andrew Garfield. I'm very pleased to say right off the bat that this was a thumbs up experience. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs higher. <laughs> it was pretty much near to perfection in my eyes. And I have to say, right from the start, you are completely drawn, not just into Jonathan Larson's world, but also into the time that it's set in. Because the film is set in the early 90s, and as soon as you're into the film, you've got this camcorder grainy style footage, which worked beautifully. Now, throughout the whole film, the story does blur very much between Jonathan Larson's reality and his performing world as well, which in some films might be very confusing, but actually that's a key character quality of Jonathan Larson as a person. So it actually works really well. So what the story is, Jonathan Larson wrote music and lyrics for Tick Tick Boom before he went to rent. And Tick Tick Boom is based very much on Jonathan Larson's own personal experiences of struggling to make it in theatre. So after Jonathan Larson had performed his monologue show, he then went on to work on Rent and unfortunately passed away the night before the opening night of Rent. After the major success of Rent, all of his lyrics and material from that monologue show was put into a new musical called Tick Tick Boom. And it premiered in 2001 off-Broadway. And Lin-Manuel Miranda, who directed the show, also performed in the role of Jonathan Larson in Tick Tick Boom in 2014. Now let's talk about Lin-Manuel Miranda's direction. This is his first major film that he's directed. And even though this was his directing debut, it worked so well because you can tell he cares so much about Jonathan Larson's experiences and him as a person. And what you can tell is very clever what Lin-Manuel Miranda has done. He's taken instances from the original 1992 performance that Jonathan Larson did and the 2001 original off-Broadway production and his own experiences from the 2014 production he was in. And he's kind of merged it all together in this beautiful film. There's actually lots of similarities between Lynn and Jonathan. They've both won the Pulitzer Prize in the past, Jonathan for Rent, Lynn for Hamilton. And you can really sense Lynn's passion to try and make this the best project possible through his direction and through the camera work. Now, I don't know about you, my lovely Fab fan, but I've personally felt very connected to the story because the whole film deals with the big issue of wanting to be creative, but also having to pay the bills. In the film, Jonathan Larson is very concerned that he's going to be turning 30 and he feels like he hasn't really achieved anything with his life. He looks up to one of his idols, Stephen Sondheim, who wrote the lyrics for West Side Story when he was 27. And I can really connect to that. I spent six years auditioning for Britain's Got Talent and every year when it was a no, it was a no, I just thought to myself, I just want to make it to the live shows before I'm 30. So I can get that sense of where Jonathan's coming from. Do you know, I actually remember I spent my 30th birthday in a tech rehearsal for The King and I. And a friend bought me a cupcake, which was lovely, but the cupcake gave me food poisoning. Um, yeah, happy 30th. <laughs> 
Okay, let's talk about Andrew Garfield, who plays the role of Jonathan Larson. Now, a lot of people might recognise him for playing Spider-Man or The Social Network. But Andrew Garfield has done a lot of theatre as well. He won a Tony Award in 2018 for his performance in Angels in America. And what I most recognise Andrew Garfield from is a Channel 4 drama from 2005 called Sugar Rush. Andrew Garfield plays the character of Tom, who's like this very geeky, adorable little schoolboy who's got a crush on the main character, who she just happens to be a lesbian. Tom. Yes. I'm gay. You're gay? Yeah. So I can't help it. Whenever I see Andrew Garfield, I'm like, oh, it's little Tom. Aww. Now, one of the big topics that's discussed in this film is about whether you should follow your heart down what is likely to be a difficult road, or if you should choose an easier path, which might not be your dream, but will mean an easier life. And what's good is that the film does give a balanced view of both those sides of the argument. Now, I do feel lucky because I've got a permanent contract role in a theatre, so my life is a bit steady, as steady as it can be in theatre, but I've still got that connection to the arts. You know, in my research before I watched the film and for doing this vlog, it was really lovely to read about how hard Andrew Garfield worked on doing his research on Jonathan Larson, and as well, how much he worked on his singing, and he wanted to give us the perfect portrayal of him, which I have to say, as soon as he walks out to that stage with the microphone and says, hello, I'm Jonathan Larson, I was in. No worries at all, he was perfect for this role. Okay, a big thing that we need to talk about is the song Sunday. Whew, you just need to emotionally prepare yourself for this before Sunday starts, okay? So there's a point in the film where they're working at the Moondance Diner and Sunday morning brunch is a very, very busy time for the diner. And all the customers just happen to be all these theatre and Broadway legends. And I was just like, oh my God, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. I'm getting a bit welled up even now just thinking about it all. It was just one legend after another. It was so beautiful to watch. And this is another way that Jonathan Larson links his love to Sondheim because one of Stephen Sondheim's big shows is Sunday in the Park with George, which has an amazing number in it called Sunday. This was very emotional as well. After Stephen Sondheim passed away, they did a big gathering in Times Square to sing Sunday as like a dedication to him. And there was lots of the Broadway theatre community there, including Lin-Manuel Miranda. So yes, Sunday was just an emotional roller coaster. Within that film, I spotted Joel Grey, Bernadette Peters, Lin-Manuel Miranda as a chef. Oh, and Skylar sisters, Philippa Sue and Renee Elise Goldsberry. And there's a wonderful blink and you miss it member where they put their arms up like that, you know, and they're doing the classic Hamilton Skylar sisters pose. And Renee played Mimi in the last performance of the original Broadway run of Rent back in 2008. And there was Adam Pascal, Wilson Jermaine Heredia and Daphne Rubin Vega. And they played the original Roger, Mimi and Angel on Broadway back in 1996. And they had a little cameo as well. And then we've got Cheetah Rivera, Brian Stokes Mitchell. Every time the camera kept changing, I was like, oh my God, it's someone else, oh my God. I mean, it was quite overwhelming to be honest. Now this is a pretty darn perfect film, but there's this one song I was a bit like, ooh, what the heck's going on here? And that was Play Game, which was a bit odd. It kind of really stood out from the rest of the film. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad song. It was a fun song. I was just like, where the heck has that come from? So the story with Play Game is that it was originally cut from the off-Broadway production of Tick, Tick, Boom, and they brought it back in for the film. Whilst I did think the song was a bit bizarre, one thing I did enjoy about that moment in the film is that they had all these theatre posters on the brick walls behind them whilst they were performing. And it was like theatre posters advertising all the shows in New York. And I spotted these great ones, there was British Mega Musical, which is a reference to things like Les Mis, Phantom Cats. Oh, and there was a hilarious one that said, a new play, but it has that guy from that television show, so you'll like it. And yes, I have to admit, I did that when I went to see the play, The End of Longing. And it was in London. It was written by and starred Matthew Perry from Friends fame. But yeah, the play was awful. It really was. And that's what I thought of as soon as I saw that poster. Like, yeah, the only reason I went to see that play is because I had that guy from telly that I like in it. Oh, and this one was great. Shakespeare. Does it matter which one? <laughs> 
Now, I was a bit disappointed because there's a song in the original cast recording called Sugar, which I love. And that song didn't make the film, or at least the full version of it. There's a little reference to it in one scene where Jonathan sings like a little line of it. I mean, I can understand why they didn't put that song into the film because it really doesn't drive the main plot forward at all. Oh, and No More didn't pack much of a punch for me personally, but I understand that that song is needed in the film because it sets Michael's character up so that they can kind of tear him down later on in the story. It's very sad what happens to Michael. I won't give it away in case you haven't watched the film, but just be prepared to get emotional. One that I really loved in the film, which I didn't really like when I saw the stage version, was the song Therapy. So Jonathan and his girlfriend Susan are having a very heated argument. And at one point when they're going to hug, Jonathan's then tapping his fingers on Susan's shoulder and she just goes like, oh my goodness, you're actually trying to think of a way that you can turn this into a song, aren't you? Now that really hit home for me because I can relate to that because there's been some times when I've been in very emotional and very dark situations. And I know it sounds twisted, but a part of my brain does think to me, try and remember this emotion and this experience because you might need it in a scene when you're acting someday. I think for theatre people, sometimes it can be very hard to distinguish the line between reality and creativity because you look for creative sources in your own reality. God, this is getting deep, isn't it? <laughs> So as well as Sunday, there was another part of the film which just blew me away from a visual point of view. And it was the scene where Jonathan goes swimming and he suddenly has the inspiration for his new song that he's been struggling to write throughout the whole film. And you see the floor of the swimming pool kind of turn to a music stave and all the notes come up on it. And then all the lyrics that are in his head are kind of blending and merging into the water. It was incredible. And that's something that you couldn't do on the stage. And that was what was lovely with this film because a lot of musical movies lately, they've just been taking the exact same story that's on stage and putting it on film. Where actually you're dealing with a completely different audience and a totally different type of media form. And you've got this opportunity to do things on film that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to do on stage. So my favourite songs from this film were 3090, Sunday, Come to your senses why and louder than words and the few things that i mentioned with play game and no more there were such minor things in what is overall a pretty darn perfect production i mean it was literally me nitpicking to find anything because otherwise i'd just be here for 15 minutes going oh my god everything's amazing <laughs> There were a few bits that really got to me on the second viewing. One bit was now hearing the voicemail that Steven Sondheim leaves on Jonathan's messaging machine. Wow, that hit home now after watching it a second time. Yeah, got really emotional that bit. And during the end song, Louder Than Words, what I spotted during the second time watching it that I didn't spot the first time. As he's playing the song, Louder Than Words, it slowly cuts to everyone in the audience and showing their reactions. And the one that really touched me the most was the marketing manager that he met, played by Laura Benanti, another Broadway star. And there's a point in the film where Jonathan goes to a marketing group to try and make a bit of cash. And Laura Benanti's character is the marketing manager who's running the group. And you can tell just within a little second film of cutting to her, her face says it all. It was really moving, actually. You could tell that her character was thinking, Darn it, I settled. Why didn't I go for it? Why didn't I try it and risk everything and live my dream? I mean, it's amazing how someone's face can just say so much in just a glimpse second and how you can pick up on that. And that is why I love theatre so much. So overall, my lovelies, definite thumbs up. Go and check out Tick Tick Boom on Netflix. You will not regret it. And that's all from me this week, my lovelies. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back next Hashtag Theatre Thursday with another fabulous vlog for you. Until then, bye. Stay fabulous. Bye. Bye.